Hello everybody and welcome to your 23rd uh, LEGO 5 tutorial and this code again is from this spread animation the regular spreadsheet animation tutorials uh, tutorial 13 and tu tutorial 14 and if you don't have the source code you can download it off my website codingmadeeasy.ca okay so in this tutorial we're going to be learning on how to incorporate multiple timers in our program so if we notice uh, before in our program when we did the sprite sheets or anything with it, we noticed that we noticed that the player's legs moved much too fast for uh, the animation, right? And we we don't want that. We want it to have a steady. We wanna we don't want to update the frame sixty times per second, but we want to get updates sixty times per second, right? Uh, so. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to be learning on how to actually incorporate two different timers to to check for two different things in our program. Okay, so what we're going to do first of all is we're going to do a constant float, and we're going to do frame f fps, and we'll set this to 15. So it'll update the frames 15 times per second. So once we get down over here, we're going to create a new timer. And I'll just copy and paste this, and we'll name this frame frame timer, and one divided by frame FPS. Okay. So now we have to register the timer, uh, just like we register different types of events, and we're, re we're registering the frame timer. Okay. So after we've done all that, then we need to start the timer. So we started our frame timer like so. So if we look at our update right here, we see that our events.type is equal to Allegro event timer. But now that we have multiple timers, we don't know which timer we're looking for, right? It, it could trigger, like we could be triggering this, uh, six, uh, like what's 60 plus 15, uh, 75 times per second uh, because uh, every single time any timer event is, is triggered, then it will it will activate this, right? So we want to distinguish which timer we're actually using, and we do that by using uh, this right here. So we're gonna do if events dot timer dot source is equal to the regular timer, uh, then we ch we update we do the con uh, the controls the updating the controls, and let me just uh, indent my code. And then for right here, this is what uh, changes the frames and stuff. So we'll put else if events dot timer dot source is equal to frame timer. Uh, then we uh, then we calculate uh, the switching of frames. So then, if we were to run this program again, oh, I need to stop the debugging. Okay, so if we recompile this and we run the program one more time, we will see that the the player's uh, frames or the player's legs move at a more steady, consistent rate. And if you want to have, like, say you want to have a walking animation or something in your game, and you want your player to, uh, like, walk at a slow, you want to have a slower animation or, yeah, whatever, for slower walking pace, uh, then you can lower the frames per second or whatever when the player's walking when the player's running then you can increase the frames per second right uh so uh but the thing the difference with that is that you couldn't make it a constant value because you can't really change constant values but if you wanted to change this within your game then you wouldn't really make it constant but anyways that's it for the tutorial i hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching and bye